I will be forever grateful for the many prayer warriors yeah, who support this channel. They pray for me, they pray for this channel, and they even let me in into the visions they receive. Prophetic visions. I really appreciate all of you very, very much. God bless you. Now recently, one of these prayer warriors <laughs> shared a very interesting vision with me. They said they saw a man called Kalonzo Musyoka ascend to the presidency of the country. Now to be very honest with you, yeah, and I'm, being, I'm not being personal, to be very honest with you, that very thought of Kalonzo Musyoka, president of Kenya, to me is a very horrifying thought. And indeed to anybody who knows this politician well. To those who know Kalonzo Musyoka's background well, have followed him politically for many years. To those who are aware of his development record. And to those who are aware of how he deals with what he sees as political threats. A political threat to Kalonzo Musyoka is anybody who outshines him in Ukambani. Kalonzo Musyoka has even been responsible, yeah, together with another politician called Johnstone Obadama, for frustrating development projects by Machako's governor Alfred Motua that would have benefited thousands of Kenyans, yeah, and frustrating those plans only because they would make Alfred Motua outshine Kalonzo Musyoka. That is the kind of politician Kalonzo Musyoka is. But having said that, yeah, I'm not going to stand up and oppose God. Never ever. God knows everything. God is everything. I'm a nobody. And let me also add something that will shock you. If you understand Kenyan politics, you will realize one thing about Kalonzo Musyoka. And it is this is just the kind of character, yeah, if we take president into consideration and our history, is just the kind of character that has the best chances of being president. You see, historically, yeah, the person who has always ended up being president of Kenya has always been a compromise candidate. In the run-up to independence, the front runner to be the first president of Kenya was a man called Tom Boyer. Another front runner was Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, yeah, the late father to Raila Odinga. The person who ended up being president was a compromise candidate called Jomo Kenyatta. When Jomo Kenyatta passed on in office in 1978, Time magazine did an article on the front runners to take over from Jomo Kenyatta. The name of Daniel Toroti Charapmoy, who was then the vice president, was conspicuously absent in that analysis. He was nowhere to be seen. The front runners were all people who were close to Jomo Kenyatta, people, members of his kitchen cabinet, Mbui Koenange, Njoroge Mungai, etc., etc. And Time magazine were not wrong in their analysis. Because at around this time, there was a meeting of the Kambu Mafia, the dreaded Kambu Mafia. And they decided that Moi was such a weak man that they should allow him, yeah, they should compromise on him being president because he was a passing cloud. And then they would organize themselves for the upcoming presidential elections, which constitutionally had to take place within 90 days. A man called Paul Ngei, very wise man, yeah, let's leave his personal character out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Ngay warned the Kiambu Mafia that if they allowed Moi to sit on that seat, they would never be able to remove him. But the Kiambu Mafia insisted that let Moi be the compromise candidate, let him be the president, the passing cloud. They would take over when they were ready. In 2001, when Moi was retiring from politics, in 2002, the following year, the front runners for the presidency were George Saitoti for Kanu and Raila Odinga for the opposition. Mwai Kibaki 
was a political nobody. He had even been beaten very badly in the 1992 presidential elections by his political junior, a man called Kenneth Stanley Jindo Matiba. But Raila Odinga was very determined yeah, to end the rule of Kanu in Kenya. So he uttered those famous words at Urupak, Kibaki Tosha. And this angered the other presidential frontrunner at the time, a man called Simon Nyachai, who walked off in a half. And so Kibaki, the man who political analysts described as a man who never saw any fence he did not want to sit on, became president. In 2013, the front runners for the presidency was Mwai Kibaki's chosen heir, Msalia Mdavadi, and Raila Odinga on the side of the opposition. Uhuru Kenyatta ended up being president. Always, always the person who ends up being president in Kenya is never a front runner. History has shown us that. It is always the kind of candidate people arrive at as some kind of compromise yeah, between the leading candidates for the presidency. Kalonzo Msioka is talking to both sides. Kalonzo Msioka is harmless. He is just the kind of perfect compromise candidate that could easily find themselves as the resident of state house. Whether you like it or not, whether you think I'm wrong or not, that is what Kenya's political history very clearly tells us. And I'm saying this fully aware of the current political challenges Kalonzo Msioka is facing. In his own Ukambani turf, yeah, from people like Kivuza Kibwana, the star governor of Makweni County, the man who's doing wonders in Makweni, the man who wanted to retire from politics, but is now being urged by people to seek the presidency after he finishes his second term as governor. And if Ukambani voters are to be honest, this is a no-brainer. Kalonzo Msioka's development record is non-existent. Kivutha Kibwana, Alfred Motua, and even Charity Ngilu have a sterling development record that can be seen very clearly by all the voters in Ukambani. In fact, recently, Kivuda Kibwana has told Kalonzo Msioka that Ukambani leadership is not a monarchy. You know, a monarchy is the only kind of leadership where you cannot be challenged. And Kalonzo has never wanted any challenge. He has dealt with challenges, yeah, imaginary mostly, yeah, ruthlessly. Ask Alfred Motua, Ask Charity Ngilu and ask anybody else in Ukambani who has tried to do something serious for the region that would sh outshine Kalonzo Musioka. Ask them what happened to them. Ask them what Kalonzo Musioka did to them. But despite all that, the reality of the situation is that politics in Kenya favors the Kalonzo Musiokas. More so now when the field for 2022 presidential candidates is extremely overcrowded. All the more reason for a compromise candidate. A compromise candidate precisely like Kalonzo Msioka. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja. Do you ever wonder what your kids do online? Maybe, you know, like dislike, approve, disapprove, or simply don't know? What about digital education? Oh yes, what about an app that delivers knowledge in an enjoyable, engaging, and child-friendly manner, just like a game, that exposes kids to all possible exam and testing scenarios, that objectively tracks and analyzes individual strengths and weaknesses before proposing practical solutions. Here comes GRASP, a 21st century revision and exams application. GRASP helps kids seize retain and apply knowledge. GRASP provides a huge data bank of appropriate examination and revision type questions. Instant automated marking, analysis, and performance reports. Revision, question definitions and rationale for answers. Effective learning and exam techniques. And the ability to enjoy self-paced learning via web, 
tablets, or mobile apps. Not forgetting the crucial parental control with real-time dashboards, exam setting, and administration portal for schools. GRASP is available for individual kids and schools. Get it now from the Play Store and instantly enjoy a free demo of 240 questions with restricted access to the amazing world of GRASP. Or you may visit www.graspexams.com to get started today. Or click the link below now to give your child an instant competitive advantage. In 2005, there was a lot of hopelessness amongst Kenyans. The promises of a new Kenya, the promises of a new beginning that we had been given in 2002 during the general elections that had removed Kanu from power were dead in the water. Out of those ashes, the Kumekucha brand was born in May 2005 to vent and to fight for a better Kenya because long-suffering Kenyans have always deserved better. Contrary to propaganda on the web, the Kumekucha blog was never launched as a business enterprise and through the years it has always been self-financed through some very difficult times. Twelve years on and still counting, our basic premise lives on and remains the same. And that's why I'm really, really excited today to announce this golden new opportunity for you to reach your, a huge audience in Kenya and all over the world with the brief commercials for your business. They will of course interrupt our videos just like this message you're taking in. And like the Kumekucha videos, they'll be permanent. And what is more, we are so committed to ensuring that you get the results you desire that we'll allow you to place the spot for free. Yep, you'll not be able to, you'll not pay for it, yeah? You'll only pay for it when you're fully satisfied with the results. Of course, we'll request a small fee for the video production, but it's a pittance. Are we crazy? Oh no, we are not. We're just very sure that you're going to get a result. I mean, 10 million views is not a joke. Why are we doing this? Of course, it will go a long way in helping us cover our video production costs on this channel. But that's not the reason. That's not the main reason. You can call me naive, but I sincerely believe that the more prosperous businesses we have owned by Kenyans, the easier it will be to push through the changes we want. And by prosperous businesses, I don't mean businesses which make money out of corruption and stealing from public coffers. Those are not businesses. Those are criminal enterprises. Anyway, if you have a genuine uh, business, this is a golden opportunity for you and I recommend that you take it on immediately. Get all the details you require in the video description area on this video on YouTube. Thanks so much for listening to me. All for a better Kenya.